Today, I will talk about um, the DNA methylation based liquid biopsy for multi cancer detection. So, why multi cancer detection is important? Um, let's look at some of the statistics uh, in China. So, um, China actually has a relatively high incidence um, and mortality rates as compared to other countries in the world. So, it accounts for 39% of the new cases in the digestive system in the world and accounts for 43% uh, 43 43.9% of the cancer death um, as compared to other countries in the world and um, the four cancers in the digestive system also accounts for nearly one third of, of the incidence uh, of all cancer incidents in China and nearly one half of the cancer death uh, of all cancer in China so it is a very heavy um, burden in China so how are we going to alleviate the problem? So we know that early detection is very important and the five year survival rates um, in the four cancers um, in localized tumor, uh, you can see is significantly higher uh, than those in metastatic uh, tumors. And if we uh, compare the patient's five years uh, survival rate in China as versus in Japan, we will see that there's a significantly high um, five year survival rate in Japan, particularly in gastric cancer and colorectal cancer in Japan as compared to China. This is because in Japan, there will be national wide um, screening program for these two types of cancer and they have a relatively high early detection rates. Um, so how about, um, so how about China is currently doing for these four cancers? So actually China has published um, it's guidelines for screening, early detection, and treatment um, for the all, all, all of the four cancer types. And um, but actually, but unfortunately, there's no national screening scheme yet um, for the four cancers. And here is some of the information that are taken from the guidelines and. We will see that um, actually for the four cancer types, except for the liver cancer, we will have a very similar uh, recommended uh, screen age. And uh, we can also see that actually the high risk population for all the four cancers, they are sometimes are overlapped. So this means that actually uh, we will have a relatively universe um, intended use population for all the four cancers. Um, but you can see that um, for the current um, guidelines, we, we will see that the screen uh, frequencies for the four cancer are very a lot uh, from every six months to as long as uh, every 10 years depends on uh, different recommended approaches. And the approaches um, that recommended by the guidelines, um, they also have limitations. So for example, for coronoscopy, it, it is invasive and um, for those um, um, for example, uh, for the sponge cytology, it will require expertise and it has limited accessibilities. And um, for some of the tests like FIT, it will have limited um, uh, sensitivities. And um, because of all these um, limitations and factors, we will see that actually the participation rate uh, for screening of these cancers is not uh, very high. So um, we are thinking about if we have a um, single test uh, for simultaneously detection of the four um, types of cancer uh, because they have a relatively uh, universe intended use population and it will more or less um, increase the patient and compliant rate and it will increase the uh, rate um, for the um, screening participations. So how about we combine the current screening tests um, for the multi-detection um, systems? So for example, um, a, a, a 65 year old male with a chronic hepatitis disease and a smoking history uh, will make him eligible uh, for the four cancer screening uh, because he falls into the high risk population criteria. And if he, uh, went through all the four um, screening tests, then uh, he would have 3% of the false positive rate uh, from the gastroscopy screening, 10% from the FIT test, 16% um, from the liver cancer screening, and 16 and 6.3% from the sponge cytology. 
and at the end, uh, he will end up to have as high as 31.3% of the false positive rate. So this uh, means that actually um, combining the current screening test is not um, cost effective for the multi-cancer detection. And we may need a single um, test with a lower false positive rate uh, for the cost effective screening of the four cancers. Um, so here is our proposed intended use population and screening mod modalities. So we will use questionnaire to identify the high risk population. And um, this uh, population will then uh, go through the liquid biopsy multi uh, for the multi-cancer detection in digestive systems. And if the test is positive, then the patient can follow up with recommended um, screening frequency. And if the test is positive, and then the patient can go through um, endoscopy or ultrasound plus AFP testing um, as indicated by the tissue of origin prediction from the test results. And um, if the follow-up test is positive, then we have a confirmed diagnosis. If not, then they can follow up with standard workouts if, if there's um, any of the alarm symptoms shows up. And then next, we, we also check um, what techniques would be the most appropriate one um, for uh, development of the uh, multi-cancer detection system in terms of um, the capability of tissue of origin and cost accuracy, the capability of early detection, accessibility, invasiveness, and um, patient compliance. And uh, currently, uh, technology available, including imaging like ultrasound, um, pass CT, um, endoscopy like gastroscopy, colonoscopy, the protein test like AFP, CA19, DNA methylation test like the one that we developed called GINET, uh, or uh, somatic mutation or CMV like um, cancer sick uh, from exact science. And um, by checking all the aspects, um, we actually find that um, using DNA methylation as the biomarker for development of these types of tests are relatively um, more superior because um, it will enable you to have a, a good accuracy on tissue of origin prediction and the cost is affordable and um, it will also have a good uh, overall accuracy and it can also enable the detection of a curable on tumors, um, which means it um, is the stage one to three tumors. And because it is a rock drawn test, so it would have good uh, patient compliance and good accessibilities. Um, so that's why we use um, DNA methylation for development of the tests. And um, next then uh, we would uh, see how, the, how to solve the key technical challenges uh, before the test can be used uh, for clinical usage. So the first technical challenge is that, is that uh, how we can uh, detect the trace signals derived from the early tumor in plasma. So um, Anchor DX has, uh, has developed its own ultra-sensitive uh, library prep, uh, platform. So it is uh, based on the single strand uh, library preparation. This will take into account of the DNA fragmented and the single strand generated uh, from the bisulfite conversion. So we also incorporate the UMI barcoding into the library prep system so that um, the, the library prep will uh, make sure that uh, each of the um, single stranded DNA and the fragmented DNA can be ligated and converted into, um, into, the, um, into the library. So um, based on this platform, then um, we can we can detect the DNA um, as uh, has a, as low as a DNA input down to one nanogram, and we have a assay LOD that is sensitive enough to detect uh, this trace signal. And it, and in addition um, to our library prep um, platforms, we also collaborate um, to, with um, Trace Science to optimize the probe design for the efficient target uh, capturing and enrichment. So um, here I have so um, just a preliminary result um, from um, the testing um, of um, some of the markers that are using the trace uh, capture uh, panel trace uh, probe panel, and uh, you can see that um, there's two um, different uh, color of 
of the um, of of the greenness. Um, it it uh, represents the two batches of the um, capture panels uh, with different lots, and we will see that uh, they are actually clustering uh, for the same samples. And we will see that uh, from the two lots of the uh, panels, the signal is very consistent. And the second um, technical um, challenge is that uh, we need to identify the cancer specific signatures and also a good marker for the tissue of origin prediction. So for doing that, uh, we actually develop a large scale in-house um, tissue and plasma sample DNA methylation database. So um, this database, um, it will cover, so the tissue database will cover 9 million uh, CPG islands and over 50% of the sample are from early stage tumors. And the plasma sample, um, they will cover multiple cancer types, um, not limited to the one that uh, we use in the digestive system, also including lung cancer, breast cancer, um, and also renal cancer and bladder cancer, and also included uh, the healthy patient, uh, the healthy population, and the corresponding benign disease to ensure clinical um, specificities. And when we identify the markers, we also compare the signals um, between the tissue and the plasma. And the third technical challenge um, would be the most important one to just make sure that. Um, the assay that we are developing, um, they would um, be sufficiently validated in the real world. So um, for this um, one, so we also have uh, experience in developing um, successfully product, uh, products that has been currently used um, um, in clinic. So the, the first one is the pharmacy class. It is a liquid biopsy test um, to identify malignant uh, lung nodule from the uh, benign lung nodule. So it is recommended by the early uh, lung cancer um, detection by the society. And it has been validated uh, by the Project Thunder, which is a 10,000 cases multi-cancer perspective clinical study. So this test would have a very high um, accuracy and it has satisfactory um, sensitivity of over 95% in even detecting um, small nodules. And um, the performance is superior um, the opacity, the myoclinic model, and the VA model. The second product um, that has been um, successfully developed is um, Urefine. So um, over now, it has accumulated 10,000 real world cases. And it has been um, designated um, by the United States FDA breakthrough device, and it also has been approved by the NMPA um, as class three IVD uh, device. So next I will talk about um, the study design for GINET development. So we have three stages of development. The first one is for market discovery. So we use um, 663 samples um, to identify the um, marker for um, cancer detection and also for tissue of origin prediction. So we divided um, the cohort into the chain and test set and the validation set. And for chain and test set, we use, uh, we use the feature uh, selection and also some um, uh, criteria to identify the, the, the markers and then we validated the markers in the validation set. And uh, with the identified marker, then we use um, 800 samples um, for model development and validation. And again, we divided the um, cohort into chain and test set and the validation set, and uh, we will validate um, its performance using the validation set. And uh, we also have stage three, which is the independent uh, validation ongoing. Uh, we are expecting to uh, have over 1,015, uh, 1, 1,500 samples. Um, to uh, validate um, the GINET performance before um, we are expecting to launch an FDT. Um, so here is the key performance um, for the GINET. Um, so the prevalence uh, for the PPV and MPV are calculated um, based on the uh, published data uh, to be 0 0.91 uh, um, prevalence for the four cancers. And with that prevalence, we will have 33.9% uh, for the uh, positive prediction value. 
and 99.7% of the negative prediction values. And this assay will have 4.9% false positive ratio as compared to the um, one that uh, we previously showed that uh, for just combining individual tests, um, it will have 31% uh, of the false positive rate. So this one is much more uh, lower. And then um, for, uh, for treatable tumors, uh, which means the stage one and three tumors, the sensitivity is 66%. And we also have an accuracy for tissue of origin prediction of 84%. So here are the um, detection sensitivity for the four types of um, uh, cancers um, in the validation set. And uh, we'll see that uh, for all the four cancers, we will see the sensitivity uh, gradually increase uh, uh, along with the stages. And um, the accuracy for the tissue of origin prediction, we will see a relatively high um, tissue of origin prediction uh, with esophageal cancer, gastric cancer, and liver cancer, but uh, we have relatively low um, tissue of origin prediction uh, for colorectal cancers. And um, we also comparing our, our performance um, to the currently um, available um, similar uh, products. Um, um, they are all uh, uh, US FDA uh, breakthrough um, device. Um, so, um, Gary is from US and Kansas City is also from US, OSC is from China. So um, if we comparing the sensitivity and specificity, we will see that we have a compatible sensitivity uh, specificity. And at the same time, we have a relatively um, high specificity. And as for um, tissue of origin prediction um, for top one of origin, uh, we also have a comparable uh, accuracies. And in terms of um, sensitivity of stage one to three tumors, um, with um, with comparable um, uh, validation test cases, um, we also see a very um, similar sensitivities um, um, as compared to the other uh, three products. So um, here is um, um, the end of uh, my presentation. So uh, it is an application and a showcase about the. Uh, a multi cancer detection project uh, that we are having. And thank you very much for your attention.